right? 13th day. People have been going through the world and you've been hearing and hearing. I'm not here to preach tonight. I just want to share a few points with you. Then we pray and we go. We continue tomorrow. Open your Bible to the book of David. Sorry? The book of First Samuel. Of course, we are talking about David tonight. First Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel 16. <clears throat> David, um, First Samuel chapter 16. I think David should have written a book. This is why I'm calling his name tonight. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm trying to find a place where we can start from tonight. First Samuel, are you there? Chapter 16. Or you read, somebody should read 11. Let's start from 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. Okay. And behold, he keepeth a sheep. Okay. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Mm. Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Mm. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and withal of a beautiful countenance mm. and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Arise, anoint him, for this is he. For this is he. Okay, somebody. You can go to chapter 17, the same place, almost the same place, chapter 17. Eight. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in Ari? Okay. Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servant and serve us. Okay, go to four, go to fourteen. And David was the youngest, and the three elders followed Saul. Okay. And but David went and returned. From to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Okay. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren. Oh, sorry. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thyself an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to their brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand and look how their brethren fare and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning. Okay, it's okay. Go to 37. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the power of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. Go to, and, go to 45. Chapter 45. Yeah, it's the exact same place, the place you're reading. Then, the then, yeah. then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shell. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thy head, from thee, 
And now we give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saved not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Eyes. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. And I let your word go through and go forth and enforce somebody's destiny tonight to your own glory in the name of Jesus. And my title says, Destiny is calling my name. Tell your neighbor, Destiny is calling my name. Walk up to three, four, five people and tell them, Destiny is calling my name. I say, Stand up, walk up to your neighbor, shut them, say, Destiny. Neighbor, destiny is calling my name. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. There are some of you who have refused to answer your destiny. Tonight we will enforce you into your destiny. If you believe that, shout, destiny is calling my name. My destiny is calling my name. What is your destiny? How many of you know your destiny? How many of you want to rule your destiny? I want to rule my destiny. How many of you? Uh, we live in a generation where a lot of people are waiting for their destiny to call their name without knowing that their destiny has already called them, but they ignore the call. Tonight we will know who has answered and who has refused to answer. Hallelujah. How many of you know David in the scripture? Huh? All of us know David. And we know how David started. Before David became a king, there are many things that happened in his life. There are many events that took place. <laughs> David didn't just become David the king overnight. Some things happened in his life that qualify him to occupy that space. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. If your destiny must call your name, he must call you through, call you out through, uh, call you out of some certain things in life. He must call you out of some certain things, some certain places. Because you cannot fulfill your destiny everywhere. There must be a particular area, particular place, a city, a town, an environment where your destiny will be fulfilled. You cannot fulfill your destiny on in every place. Sometimes you can't fulfill your destiny in your father's house. That is why you left your father's house and came to the city. To enforce your destiny. Let's get into the word tonight. Some certain things, certain things happened in the life of David. David did not become a champion overnight. We live in a generation where a lot of us, a lot of believers, want to become champion overnight. They just want to, you know, before tomorrow, boom, everywhere starts shining. That is not destiny. That is not how destiny works. Destiny needs a process. You need to go through some things. You need to come out of some certain places. You need to come out of some certain environment. You need to come out from some certain communication. For destiny, for you to hear destiny, you cannot hear your destiny in a crowded area or in a crowded environment. Because the noise of the environment will, will block your ears from hearing your destiny. You might be thinking that the noise of the crowd is the voice of your destiny. But that is not the voice of your destiny. A young man. Can you be eating that for me, please? Yes. A young man called David. Uh, the Bible recorded that he was 17 years old. And history also made us, we don't know, really know. But uh, they say he was 17 year old boy. Uh, was a sheep attendant he was taking the care of his father's sheep before uh, 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 david become david the king he was a shepherd he was a sheep attendant he was taking care of his father's sheep in other words uh, his father's sheep he was taking care of and god found him worthy uh, this one can take care of my own sheep which was israel 
Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, whatever you are going through is a glimpse of your destiny. Some of the things you are passing through now, you think is a battle. You think is witches and wizards that are fighting you. You think they are foundational problems. They are glimpses. They are steps to your destiny. There are steps, uh, there are platforms on where you will stand to fulfill your destiny. David was in the bush taking care of his father's sheep. Uh, this one will come, he will clean it up and take care of it. Any sick one, he will take the one and make sure that that one doesn't die. He was busy fending for his father's sheep while his brothers and sisters were in the palace eating chicken, eating all kinds of things, uh, living a luxurious life. He was busy in the bush. Uh, he was busy taking care of his father's sheep and God, who is the destiny caller, was busy watching him in heaven. He God wanted to know if David was going to take care of his, his sheep already. Let me tell you, whatever you are doing right now, any position you are occupying right now, I want you to know that God is watching it. God is aware of whatever you are doing. He records it. David, a shepherd in the making, was going to be a leader to lead the children of Israel. Do you know what it means to lead a sheep? Uh, they can be pampered. Uh, and the Bible said, one of the times when he came to talk to, uh, when, he, when his father told him to leave and come and see the brothers. And when he wanted to go and fight them, someone was asking him, Anya, what is the problem? You are too small. He said, uh, I, there was a day he brought a good report. There was a day a, a, a bear came to eat one of the sheep. I had to carry the bear to its mouth and bring out the mouth, bring out the sheep from his mouth and kill the bear. If I can do that, I can kill this also incised Philistine. So God was in heaven watching. God was in heaven looking at him. I want you to know that was not just an ordinary event. It was orchestrated by God. There are certain things that happen in your life. You should know that it was planned, divinely planned by God to enforce your destiny. What David was trying to do was to answer the call of his destiny. David was answering, was trying to answer the voice of the destiny. Ah, can you imagine a young man? Ah, what gave him that, that mind? What gave him that braveness? No, he was too brave. He was so brave that a bear came to a boy, not a man. He was at that stage a boy with a heart of a man. There are boys with a heart of men, with a heart of a man, and there are men with a heart of boys. Any man with a heart of a boy can never fulfill his destiny. And any woman with a heart of a girl will never even hear the voice of her destiny. Lift up your hands and say, Oh Lord, give me the grace to hear the voice of my destiny. Can you open your mouth and pray that prayer one minute? Go ahead, go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. I want you to put your hand on your chest and say, whatever that is happening in my life has been divinely planned orchestrated by God divinely planned and orchestrated divinely planned and orchestrated by God see that 
Each step that he takes was planned. Was a plan by heaven to launch him into his destiny. God does not give cheap tasks to weak men. He gives great tasks to men with the heart of a lion. In this generation we are in, a lot of things are happening. You don't need to be chicken hearted for you to rule in your destiny. If you must enforce your destiny, you must have the heart of a lion, which was what David had. For him to kill a bear means that he can kill a David. Am I talking to somebody here? If you cannot take care of a little responsibility, don't pray for a bigger responsibility. Because if you can't take care of the little responsibility given to you, that means you cannot be able to take care of a bigger responsibility. One of the days, after anointing David, a day came and God told someone, you need to go to Jesse's house. I need to anoint somebody to become a king. I have rejected so. Just go and anoint somebody. He went to the house of Jesse looking for a man with bears, looking for a man with body, looking for a man that is very tall. He was looking for a man with his, with his, with his, with his physical, you know, the kind of attributes that I want to give to him. The person must be giant. The person must be a giant, must have a butt belly, must have a bear, must be very tall and huge. That was what he was imagining. But then we are passing. He wanted to annoy this one. God said, no, I am not calling this one. There is a voice, somebody tonight, calling a person under the sound of my voice to come out from the bush and come to the place of fulfillment, place of destiny fulfillment. Bless of destiny fulfillment. Bless of destiny fulfillment. Some of you have been obscured. You have, you have been you have been hidden for a long time in the bush in your family with family problems with battles of life. I hear the angels of God saying to me tonight, a voice is calling somebody from heaven to come out from that environment that has been limiting you. That environment that has refused to let you fulfill your destiny and I hear a voice saying tonight I am calling you out to become the great woman I want you to be I am calling you out to become the great woman I want you to be the great man I want you to be ah the great businessman I want you to be I am calling you out to fulfill your destiny to fulfill to fulfill your destiny <laughs> If not for the intervention of God, David would have been in the bush. For years he was there, tending his father's sheep. But it was not in vain. He was going through process. He was going through training. He was going through some certain things. God was removing some things and adding some things. That is why you must not kill yourself anytime you make a mistake. Because every mistake is, is a lesson. It should, it, should, it should add something to you and remove something. Remove things that you know that are not good and add things that should be there. Devil was there minusing and adding. God was busy minusing and adding. He might not this one. No, it's not hard to do it. Do it this way. That is why you make some mistakes. That is why you have some heartbreak. That is why you have some business failures. That is why people disappoint you. He saying, hey, oh yeah, remove this one, add this one. This is not how to do it. If you do it this way, you will not get to your destination. Am I talking to somebody here tonight? And God sent a somewhere. Just as he sent men of God, he has sent women of God to come and help you. Enforce your destiny. Ah, somebody went to the house of Jesse. Where is this one? He come at no man. He brought out this one. Nobody was there. And he asked, are these all your children? Because God told him, I have not chosen this one. There is somebody under the sound of my voice. A voice of destiny is calling your name. Ah. You might say, I am not the one. I am not qualified. I am too small. I am the least in my father's house. I don't have anything. No back account. No connection. Nothing at all. I am too young. When it comes to destiny, age doesn't matter. When 
it comes to destiny, age doesn't matter. What matters is the voice calling your name. God said, I don't, I, 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 I am not a God that look at your appearance. I look at the heart. He said, I look at the heart. I look, I'm looking for a man or woman with a lion's heart that will go out there and pick up my sheep from the mouth of the lions. For you to defeat a lion, you must have a lion heart. For you to defeat a lion, Goliath was a lion. Before you defeat a, 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 a lion, that means you have gone to war, killed many lions. You must learn how to kill these skills on how to kill a lion. Am I talking to somebody here? And David had gone through those schools. And one day God called him out. I anoint him for a greater height. Anoint him for a greater height. <laughs> he has gone through these schools. Some of you repeat schools because you have not passed your examination. For you to get to that test you'll be praying about, that means you have to pass some examination <laughs> and get the qualification, get your resume, get, get, get. Am I talking to somebody here? Get your certificate. Uh, what was the certificate of David for him to go to war? He said, I have killed a bear before. That was a report. I remember a sermon that says, I come in the volume of book written about me. There is a uh, volume of book written about you, written about your destiny, written about your family. There is a reason of book written about your destiny. And for you to come and kill Goliath, you must come in the volume of that book. Ask your neighbor, do you know the volume of books written about you? It's like they don't, you don't understand what I'm talking about tonight. Do you understand? You must come in the volume of books. I come. You uncircumcised Philistine. I come in the volume of book. Ah. Ah. I come. You have been knocking. Trying to make sure that that you fulfill you tap into your destiny this is not a year that you have to start running around your destiny you must launch out you must start manifesting your destiny am i talking to somebody here you cannot come to be 12 days or 12 14 days of enforcing your destiny and still remain the same you must manifest your destiny uh, if you hear me can you jump up and shout amen like a thunder I say you must manifest your destiny. I say you must manifest your destiny. I say you must manifest your destiny. You don't need to run away from process. When the right time comes, God will call you out. Sit down. There is a time for everything. When it's time, the voice of destiny will call you out. Go call David. <laughs> you might be thinking, I have been here for too long. When is God going to change my destiny? When is God going to change my life? This year, 2020, we have been praying, oh God, change the destiny of my business. Ah, uh, maybe God is trying to package you so that you will get more ideas. So that he will not he will not just launch you out and you start losing money. There are some people that invested in some businesses. Because they were premature, they were not, they were not, they were not prepared, they were not equipped enough, and they invest in a wrong business. And because of that, they lose a lot of money. Maybe God has refused to give you a man because he knows you cannot maintain the man. You cannot maintain the marriage. That is why he is trying to prepare your mind, make you mature enough. To be able to handle a man. God saw that David was now my choice. I call him out. Anoint him. Anoint him. This is the time. We're going to have an anointing service on Sunday. Anoint him. So that he can go and possess the land. So that he can go and possess the gate. So that he will shine forth. Anoint him. 
for the year 2020 to take charge, to take dominion, to rule and to reign, to defeat the Goliath of their family, to defeat the Goliath of their destiny. Goliath was the only thing. See the David destiny here. See the see David destiny here. See Goliath and see Go David. So David needed to push, take away the stumbling block that was limiting him from entering his destiny. And that was Goliath. The reason why a lot of us today are not yet manifesting our destiny is because there is still a Goliath. And that Goliath is a stepping stone to your destiny. So if you kill the Goliath, see you, see destiny. See you, see you, SA. See you, see China. See you, see whatever you are praying God for. That was the only platform he needed. It was after that platform, after that event, that the people, the children of Israel began to sing for David. Paul has killed how many? 1,000. And David has killed 10,000. That was the only advert. Ay, 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 ay. May God use your enemies to do adverts for you. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I want to prophesy to somebody. As your destiny is about to shine forth, I decree and declare, may God use an event to showcase you, to showcase you, to showcase you. If your amen is louder, can you shout them and shout amen like a thunder? One event just killed the Goliath. Just kill him, take him out of the way. And you will hear the voice of destiny. And after anointing David, David went back to the bush again. <laughs> because he didn't hear clearly. Or he was waiting for an appointed time. It was there that the king asked David, asked, asked the people. It was after anointing David that the spirit of distress, depression, rested on saw on saw the, 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 the king because the mantle has left him some of you tonight the spirit of God is making me to understand that mantle shall rest on some of you mantles 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 there are people that have failed God and God is removing the mantles from their life and he is releasing it to other to the younger generation there are billionaires that have failed God are you sitting down where this word is coming up oh my god there are billionaires that have failed God and God is removing the mantle from them and he's resting on somebody on this he's resting on somebody tonight is resting on somebody in this church. There are politicians that have failed God, and God is removing the mantles from them. And He's saying, I'm resting it, I'm releasing it back to some of my sons, some of my daughters here. There are those that God has decided to equip with His anointing. To win souls, to expand the kingdom of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See that the man who led saw and landed on David. That day, David became a king. What he needed was a platform. And the Bible says, the spirit, a demon, started tormenting the soul. King, former king. And this man needed something to quench him, to remove or to cast away the spirit. That was the voice 
of David. And one of the workers, servant, told him, I know a man who can sing. Anytime he sings, I know that this demon will leave you. And he said, please, fetch me the man. Voice of destiny. I want to pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. God is going to set somebody up just for you. <laughs> God is about to send, set somebody up just to showcase you. Ha. There is a gift in you that has been dormant. It is time for God to activate it. And it is only that gift that will enforce you to your destiny. Ha. But Saul so said, I need a man that is skillful, that is handsome. He described the kind of man he needed to come and play for him. He, don't, he doesn't need any kind of person. He needed a trained man. What if, if David wasn't ready? What if, if, if he wasn't trained at that time and Saul was looking for him? <laughs> there are people out there. People say there is no job. There, is, there are jobs everywhere. But there are men who need, they have their money. They can pay you any amount. What they need is do you fit into my qualification? The kind of thing I want. There are good men out there who are looking for good women. What they want, do you fit into the kind of woman I want to marry? Sit down. And so, say, I know so, 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 person, they say, I know a man. Hey, after this meeting, Somebody will say, I know a man in your life. Uh, someone will recommend you. There will be a divine recommendation that will launch you in into your destiny. That will enforce you into your destiny. That will enforce your business from booming. That will enforce your marriage to happen. That will enforce your ministry to happen. If you believe that, jump up and shout heaven like a thunder. I know a man, voice of destiny. I know a man. I know a man. I know a man that can do all this. I know a man that can sing. Why he sing? Your sickness will go away. There is a gift in your hands. It is time for God to use it. I hear the anointings. I hear the words of God saying, I need that your gift. You have been praying for it. You have been preparing for it. This is the time. 2020 is a time for you to use your gift. You have been here for too long. Play with your gift. I am serious with your gift. But God is saying, the voice of destiny is saying, it is time. It is time. Come out from the bush. David, come out from the bush. You don't belong to a bush. The bush is just a training ground. You don't belong to a bush. That is just a training ground. Come out to a place to manifest your destiny. Come out to a place to showcase who you are. Come out to a place to show the world that I have called you. Am I talking to somebody here tonight? God has put something in your life. He has put something in your business. He has put something in you. And that thing is your destiny. And I say, God, I hear God saying tonight, I have come to enforce it. 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 Deep, calling unto deep. Saul was a king. I needed a king-like person to come and play for him. Without knowing, he was releasing the mountain. He was he was shifting the mountain to the to another person. Deep calling unto deep. There was something in Saul that was also in David. <laughs> this year, I'm opening my eyes and sign. Kings will look for you. Yeah. 
Amen is so poor. I say kings will look for you. Queens will look for you. Men the matters in the kingdom will look for you. Ah, your gift will pray for you. Your gift will pray for you. Your gift will pray for her. That could be a stepping stone to enforce your healing anointing. It's not about hearing the word of God. But hearing it and practicing it, putting it into practice. You must come face to face with destiny. What I'm talking about is you might not have money in your pocket, but you know by now you should have a car. Force it, enforce it by going to price the price of a car. I'm giving you an example. Don't see your situation as it is. See it as an opportunity. Because most problems in life are just to enforce your destiny. Lift up your hands. Yes. Some troubles of life, some battles of life are not demon planned. They are divinely planned. Lift up your hands and say, Oh my father, in the name of Jesus oh God of heaven tonight help me to know when my destiny calls me pray that prayer again go ahead pray that prayer for two minutes pray that prayer for two minutes pray that prayer for two minutes Go ahead, pray that prayer. We pray in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, are you praying at all? We pray in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand. We're going to pray a prayer. Say, Oh Lord, my Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift up your hands. There is somebody here tonight. The Spirit of God said, Yes, sir. He said, you have been on a spot. He said, that person, I have moved him. But he he's still thinks that he's still in a spot. Because he has been on a spot. But within these prayers and fasting, I have moved him. And he said, but this person still thinks. He is still in the spot. He said, tell him I have moved him. He said, tell him. He said, man, he said, I have moved you. He said, I have moved you. I have moved you. And from now to three months time, this word of God will come to pass in your life. Your amen is so unbelieving tonight. Your amen is so unbelieving tonight. I don't know who that person is, but the word of God is sure. And the word of God is true. I decree, I join my, hand, my faith with the host of heaven. And I decree tonight, let that word of God come to pass. In your life and in your family. In your life and your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands. Say, oh Lord, my Father, in Jesus' name, every Goliath or every stumbling block blocking me 
from entering into my destiny, from launching into my destiny, from enforcing my destiny. Tonight, I bring you down by the power of the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and declare. Whatever has become a stumbling block, resisting you from enforcing, resisting you from launching into your destiny, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth. Can you pray tonight? You are not praying. Are you praying? Pray, pray, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Zaka kaya la vosha. Zeke ya da da bro kana da 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 yesh. Make a Whatever that has been resisting me, every resistance. We pray in the name of Jesus. Is he only this man that is here? We pray in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray tonight. Oh God, bring me face to face with my destiny. <laughs> bring me face to face. God, I am ready. God, I am ready. And make sure you are ready while praying this prayer. Bring me face to face with destiny. I am tired of hiding from my destiny. I am tired of disobeying the voice of my destiny. Oh God, bring me face to face with my destiny. Just like you brought David face to face with his destiny. Open your mouth and hold up for me face to face if you are not praying that prayer that means you are not ready yet I say it's not about age it's not about your status you might be 40 years but yet you are yet to fulfill your destiny you might be 50 years but you are yet to fulfill your destiny open your mouth you might be 20 years or 17 years and this is the time for you to fulfill your destiny. Open your mouth and declare. Bring me face to face. Bring me face to face. Bring me face to face. face to face with my destiny help me to embrace my destiny help me to embrace my destiny help me to embrace my destiny <laughs> your destiny might not might not be what you, you imagine it might not be what you're praying for God give me the grace no matter what my destiny is give me the grace to embrace it Embrace it, embrace it, and begin to manifest it. Begin to manifest it. Help me to fulfill my destiny. We pray in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a better amen tonight? Lift up your hands. We are praying two more prayers. David said, This man called Goliath is too small for me because I had once killed 
Amen. That came to devour my sheep. And I will not allow this man to devour the sheep of God, which was Israel. David was not fighting on his own interest. He was fighting for the interest of God. He said, I come in the name. You don't want to enforce your destiny because you want people to see you. You want people to recognize you. You want to, your destiny to be enforced because you want the name of God to be known. You want to protect the interests of God. Ha! This man came to defy the children of God. They are God. God of heaven. And David stood and said, never. God is looking for men that will say never for his name's sake. Men that will say never. I will not allow this thing to happen. I will not allow you to blaspheme against the name of the Lord. I will not allow you to defy the name of God. Never. That is, those kind of people are, they are few in the Christendom. They are few. God is looking for men. He's going to, he's going to empower for his purpose. Those that we, that we, that we fight for him selflessly. David was not fighting for his own benefit, but for the benefit of the children of Israel. For his people to be set free. For the name of God to be lifted. Ah, for the safety of the people, not for his own interest. Saul, at the time, began to fight for his own interest. He wanted to protect his name. He wanted to protect his legacy. See, when you start chasing everything, and when you just start chasing your business, more than the business of God. God will allow you to lose your own business. He will, he will, he will help you to invest in the wrong businesses because you neglected his own business. This year, make up your mind not to neglect the business of God, which is his kingdom, which is his church, which is the souls around you. Do not neglect if you want God to enforce you into your destiny. Lift up your hand. Say, oh Lord, my father. <laughs> I'm not moving the direction you used to know me. You know? Yeah, it's strange, right? And this is how the Spirit of God wants me to talk tonight. Lift up your hands. The power of God is here. I feel it so strongly on me. Can I ask you a question? What is your report card? What is your report card? The report card of David, I killed a bear. It means I can do this. What is your report card? God is requesting your report card tonight. What have you done for me before that qualifies you for the higher heights? What have you done for the kingdom? That qualifies you for this higher high you are praying about. Because I am the higher, I am the destiny you are talking about. God is the destiny you are praying about. He is the destiny. He is the voice of destiny. If you want to rule with me, if you want to reign with me, what are your qualifications? What have you done? Lift up your hands. destiny is calling my name. Say Jesus tonight I surrender to your lordship. I might not have a report card but tonight I believe that I can do all things through Christ oh God this responsibility that I'm praying about give it to me I can handle it open your mouth and pray I can handle it yes I can take care of a home can you pray yes maybe that is what God wants to hear 
Maybe that's just the only thing the angels want to hear tonight. I can handle a business, a business empire. I can handle it. I can handle a home. I can handle your church. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Open your hands. The anointing of God is here. I can do all things. Now me. I can do all things. Give me this mountain. Give me this contract. I want to rule my destiny. In few minutes, we are going to live here. Pray this prayer with all your heart. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Be in a place. Stay in one place. Just lift up your hand. And we pray this prayer. Shut your eyes. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Yes. Yes, oh God. Yes. Yes. The voice of destiny. Can you do this? Can you do that? What is your response? Yes, oh God. I can do it. For I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Let the ear come out. Shaka ya la da 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 ear za. Break the ear la da 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 bush. Shaka ke ear la da mo kana. I can do all things. I can do all things. Jesus. I can do all things. Jesus. Come on. I can do all things. Jesus. 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 I can do all things. Yes, Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ. Through Christ. Through Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. God is saying, I have given many of them responsibilities before. That should have launched them into your de their destiny. But they neglected it and they didn't take it serious. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Now lift up your hands and say, oh God, I am sorry. If there is any responsibility that I didn't take, I didn't take care of well, let it not be a hindrance from you reaching out to me tonight. I am sorry for neglecting you and neglecting the responsibilities laid in my hands. Now lift up your hands. Jesus as many. That pray this prayer with all their heart. Tonight, that responsibility that will launch them into their great destiny. Lay it in their heart. Lay it in their hands. Now. 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 Just lift up your hands. Shut your eyes. Shut your eyes. The anointing of God is coming upon somebody tonight. The anointing of God. The anointing of God. The grace of God. The response of the mantle that was taken from you. God is restoring it back tonight. Lift up your hands and shut your eyes. Jesus. 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 
Jesus. Holy Ghost. Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey, thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lift, lift up your hands and shut your eyes. Yes. Lagavoshakananamos. Holy Ghost. Bagaladanamos. Jesus. Holy Spirit. Whatever that was taken from you tonight. Yes. Jesus. Whatever that was taken from you, shut your eyes. Jesus. Jesus. Restoration. Restoration. Holy Ghost. Jesus. Jesus. Restoration. Destiny. Begin to hear the voice of destiny. Jesus. 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 Holy Ghost. Jesus. 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 Come on. 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 Seke ia da 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 mosha, leke ia da 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 ia da mosha sala. Yes, 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 yes. Holy Ghost, Jesus, Jesus, Holy Ghost, restoration, restoration. Restoration. Jesus, yes. That cap, that crown. Holy Ghost, thank you. That crown. Because of negligence. Come on. Restore. Yalabosha. Saka Iadadamo Kanana. Restoration. Restoration. Begin to hear the voice of destiny. Now. Come on. Jesus. 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 Begin to hear the voice of this. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. The anointing. The anointing. Yes. Yes. The hand of God is mighty in your heart. Shaka. Yes. Shaka la da bosa. Let him sit by the rock. In the name of the Lord, let us sing me here. Let us sing me here. Yes, say I can never shut the rock. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. I speak of you. I speak of you. You are Jesus that I am that I am. You are Jesus that I am that I am. You are sick. Say you be healed. May you be healed. Receive your healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Hi, Lord. That's the manifestation. Lift up your hands. 
Jesus, come on. Power is stuck. Whatever has limited you. Jesus. 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 The power of God is still moving. Yeah. Thank you, all of us. Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, take control. Jesus. 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 Just lift up your hands. I want to drop your mind. Say. There's a business that has just been restored. A business. God say that business has just been restored. A business. It has just been it has been it was scattered. But the spirit of God saying. I've launched that business into a greater height tonight. Lift up your hands. Hello, ma. Are you married? You? Yes. Are you a member of this church? Hmm? Make sure you come here tomorrow. I want to pray for you. Not tonight. I want to pray for you. You've gone through a lot in life. I see you coming out from this one. You enter this one. Different kind of steps. Those things have been prepared by God for a purpose. Are you hearing me? Join your hand. Are you? Is your friend or your mom? Join your hand. Because I see a connection. I pray tonight, every storm in this home, in these lives, be quenched tonight. In the name of Jesus, whatever you have lost, by the mercy tonight, it is restored. In Jesus' name. I'll pray for your family tomorrow. There's a word the Spirit of God laid in my heart, but there's no time tomorrow. Jump your hands together for Jesus Christ. When coming tomorrow, come with someone, come with a friend, come with a brother, come with a sister, come early, and as you do that, the Lord bless you. Can somebody shout three times, destiny is calling my name. Calling me. Destiny is calling me. And may you answer in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Jesus, I Jesus, I Jesus, Stand up, lift up your hands and say, Give 
the mark of death on your forehead. Turn his face. Give me anointing oil. Give me anointing oil. I take away the mark of death on your forehead. Resurrection for spirit. You will not die. Don't drag a woman with any man. Do I make sense to you now? Don't drag a woman with any man. You know what I'm saying? Any woman you put her into, and there is a man that is dragging it with you, get out. If you don't get out, it will lead to your death. That's what God told me. And the Lord said to me that you know what is what I'm saying. Am I right? Don't you know what I'm talking about? Eh? You do. You know. Don't. Don't do big boy. Don't do that over your knees. Don't. That is not where to use faith. It's where to depart. My pass. Because you're, there's, there is somebody that is meant for you by God. That will bring life to you. And expand you. Don't let any woman make you live at her mercy. You understand what I'm saying? I want to take your two legs out from the relationship now. That will lead to death. Can I take your legs out? Stand behind me.
breathed upon the clay, and the clay became a living soul. Yeah. 
you can also send an offering to this work. Are you listening to me? We are not afraid of taking offering. Because if we don't take offering, suffering begins in people's life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we are not ashamed of doing the scriptures. Are you listening? God said this one, bring in your tithes and all your offerings. Come on. Are you hearing me? Yes, and I ask that, that the priest will give me an offering tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Lift up your offerings. Come for. Let them see you coming to give your offering. Watch them give offering. They, these are the ones that didn't buy into your lies. The church comes to take offering. Yes, we are taking offering. Because, because we are not using speaking in tongues to buy this or to change life, to change equipment. The woman of God that is going to sleep tonight in the hotel is not speaking in tongues that will pay the hotel bill. It's money that will pay for it. Am I talking friends? So don't be afraid of it. Come on. Are you shy so I do not see you as one of those giving offering? Please be bold to give your offering. Come on. Hallelujah, somebody. Lift it up before the Lord. Say, Father, this is my offering. I demand that all good measure, shake it down, run it over. You will cause men to give to my bosom in all currencies in Jesus' name. You know why? Money does not belong to God. Money belongs to man. That's why you say you will cause men to come and give you money. Okay. He will throw money up from heaven so that whatever you lay hands upon will begin to flourish because you are giving unto God. So don't be shy to give unto God because I am the God that gave me the power to make way so that, so that there's a reason why he gives you money. The purpose of giving you money so that the kingdom of God will be established. And the Bible says, with silver and gold will I establish my kingdom, not with speaking in tongues and praying and fasting. My talking friends, he said, with silver and gold, which means naira and gold, dollar and pound, shillings, currencies, because that's a medium of exchange. Am I talking? You can't buy this microphone with faith. It is faith fated with money. Is it? Faith moves God. I use faith to cast out demon. You saw it here now. I use faith to heal the sick. Didn't you see it? But I use money to buy equipment. Faith moves heaven. Money moves the earth. So don't be afraid of money. Maybe. Don't be afraid. In fact, when you're coming to Peter, Sasha, don't pay my title. Let everybody, let the, everything that has here. I love you, baby. Tomorrow is another beautiful day. Better than today. The oil of tomorrow and the manner of tomorrow will be sweeter than the manner of today. God's servant just did introduction. Chapter 1. Hallelujah, friends. You know, I like God. You are expecting the woman of God, the normal thing she normally does. And God moved out another direction. Am I talking? I love that. Come on. Hallelujah. Now lift it up and say, Father, let God grant unto me financial open heavens. In Jesus' beautiful name. Drop it at the altar. Let the altar speak for you. Let the altar speak for you. Let the altar speak for you. If you don't have to give, don't be shy. Tomorrow is a God who opened up for you and give to you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit divine abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall abide in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now listen to me. I got a good news. I got a good news. And this news will bless your life. Pastor Elizabeth will be wedding soon. She's going to bring the wedding card. And the whole church, the whole church, <laughs> the whole church will be in that wedding. Because it is our own wedding. Everybody says our wedding. Someone say it is our church wedding. The first wedding of the year. And it's going to hold in our Sabbath. Thank God we have boss that can take people to our Sabbath. And many of you have cars that can drive you to our Sabbath. Everybody is free to do our shabby. Let there be 200 as she be. In Jesus' name. Are you happy? Are you happy? She's getting married. So fast, man. I like this, man. Um, very soon, you will see the husband. The man has seen me. Fine boy. 
know people. You know, these preachers, you know, I don't understand these preachers. When they come to church, they will tell you, lift up your hands and close your eyes. They open it. They open their eyes. Choose the best. Am I talking French? That is what the pastor that is getting married to her did to her. Elizabeth closed her eyes because he opened his eyes. Then, lay, lay, oh. I chose Elizabeth. Well, that boy, when they came, I, I put a staff there. 